All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have old school comics. We're, we're bringing it back. I didn't know, but we're bringing it back. Uh, we have a cool guest today. Uh, we'll uh, talk about this right after this intro. Big, big news today with Heritage. Um, so we're going to talk about it and then enjoy. Here we go. So, so as you see on the intro, DS isn't here. I got my man Eric Yee filling in for DS. So, and then uh, we have our man who always comes on with Heritage, Mr. Brian Weeman, the Air, aka the Heritage Comics Grader. What's going on, Brian? Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks. And then we have the man, the myth, the legend of Instagram, uh, Mr. Gabriel, aka Black Cat Collection. What's going on, brother? How you doing, guys? Thank you. Good, good, good. So everybody's wondering why why I assembled the uh, Voltron, aka the Supergroup. Uh, big news coming out of Heritage. We have an auction going on that features my man's uh, Black Hat collection. Uh, is uh, his book. So uh, super stoked. We all see the photos on Instagram. Um, just amazing stuff. People drool over. I, I I always bring up the one picture that you had gave of your uh your room where it has all the books and it's just like mesmerizing and people are just zooming in on different picks on the uh, on the old shelves um but let's uh I, I guess let's can we can we talk about like how, how you got in you know when you started what's your love all that good personal info we can talk about and then we'll then we'll start laying down the, the hotness of the books well while my wife is standing right here i just want to uh mentioned how Brian was one of the few people that actually saw that room and she was so proud of me when I took our uh, third car garage and made it into a two car garage <laughs> um, <laughs> she was so proud say hi honey hello there you go <laughs> that's funny I uh, I did the same thing I, I got the I got the I built a podcast studio it's not done it's literally like this is like one year away or one year from uh building the walls and stuff so i just gotta put stuff on the back but yeah i'm in the same boat my wife was super thrilled about making a podcast <laughs> studio mm -hmm. good times yeah. uh so i'm sorry what you were asking uh oh no we're just talking about how, how you i guess how, how when do you start collecting how did you get into it you know how, how you swerved into i mean you talk about how you started collecting what you collected and how you went into the uh you know i guess pre-code horror Charming. Well, I mean, as a kid, um, you know, we just didn't have a ton of money. So, you know, in the, in the 80s, they were throwing everything at you as far as like, you know, the best advertising ever. You wanted every G.I. Joe and Transformer and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I went to uh, the Boys Club, which in, I don't know if they have them everywhere else, but in California, it's pretty yep. much free uh, uh, babysitting. So one kid there showed me uh, G.I. Joe number 23. It had this most badass cover by Michael Golden, who actually drew the Danzig skull. But oh, uh, I didn't know that. That's pretty badass. Well, go look at uh, Christ Star number eight and uh, check out the bottom. It's like the worst kept secret, but um, Danzig says otherwise. I like Danzig too, so you know who knows. But anyway, um, yeah, I just saw the artwork, and then another kid gave me uh, GI Joe twenty one the uh, silent issue and it was just kind of on from there. So um, I was able to convince my mom to give me 60 cents every Sunday or, you know, what was it? Monthly 60 cents, <laughs> you know, once a month and I grabbed the new issue. And then uh, when it popped up to 75 cents, we really had to renegotiate, but, um, <laughs> and I was also a, uh, always a pretty good artist. Um, so like I would, um, if kids got G.I. Joe's, I'd ask them to save me the packaging so I could look at the back and draw the characters, you know, and and then I would start um, kind of hustling at school and drawing comics, you know, putting kids in them. And then they would pay me with, you know, G.I. Joe guy or a Transformer. And eventually I started uh, amassing all this shit. My mom, was, oh, wait, are we 60 seconds in? Yeah, we're good. We're good. That's way good. Yeah, yeah. Way good. <laughs> Cocksucker. Like yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just, uh, um, uh, you know, it's 
not so much comics yet, but it was the whole idea of the collecting and the fact that, you know, we couldn't afford it and I, I wanted it. I wanted to get into other books. I wanted to do this and that and the other. But as far as um, the horror stuff, you know, just as a kid in Illinois, um, the big fun thing to do with my dad was we'd go to the little local uh, library because this, you know, farm town with really much to do and pick out some books. And I'd always get the monster books, you know, they'd have like the black and white um, books that would show like Lon Chaney and all, you know, Bella Lugosi and whatnot. And I didn't much care for the stories. I just liked the pictures and drawing from them and the, the general um, spookiness of it, you know. Um, so fast forward maybe to age 13, 14, getting into like heavy metal and punk. And, you know, I'd always been into it, but they started making magazines with, you know, all the guys that you, that you liked finally. Um, and there was this great Metallica issue. And I saw this picture of Kirk Hammett sitting on all these comic books. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a real famous yes. picture of him. Yeah. Um, and I just was trying to figure out what books are these? Like, where did these come from? Uh, he had like an original Freddy glove in the picture. He had a 12-inch um, Boba Fett, you know, an 18-inch, I think it was Kenner, uh, Alien, all these things that I didn't even know existed because there was no internet. And if you didn't see them in real life, they didn't exist. Um, and I just kind of uh, thought from that day forward, I got, I got to find these. And then uh, maybe a couple of years even after that, yeah, uh, that's the newer version. Okay. Uh, um, how about this one? That, that's the one. Yep. Yeah, we'll just do this. Uh... And just about every book in there I have. Um, because I bought his. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I wanted to recreate that. Uh, and in fact, I did recreate it and uh, brought it to him one day. And it was him and uh, uh, who was all sitting there. It was him, uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses, and Corey from Slipknot. And I forget, maybe Scott Ian from Anthrax. And, you know, I was all excited to show Kirk the photo. And uh, I, I just remember Slash looking at it and Corey and everybody saying how cool it was. And, you know, as I'm walking up, I'm just thinking that maybe Kirk and I were the only nerds there. But it was cool to see that. Um, but, yeah, just always wanted to recreate that. That's what got me into it. Uh, but being able to find it, you know, again, we didn't have the Internet, uh, you know, at age 14, 15, 16. Correct. So, like, a buddy's mom bought him these uh, those Gerber books. Mm -hmm. And it was like my mind was blown when I saw them you know, all these golden age books, like, holy shit, they're so violent and crazy. And, you know, they weren't like what I thought where it was just all Mickey Mouse books and yeah. uh, Archie shit. It was yeah. like... Fun, yeah, funny books, this, right? This yeah, so like that. Yeah. And, and it's really funny because I used to get, my friend, uh, when I was 14, 15, he had the Overstreet Price Guide. And we would look through the, this, this thick, thick price guide and laugh at oh action comics one is worth ten thousand dollars there's no way i'm ever going to see one of those oh look at this the detective 27 is worth ten thousand dollars i'm never going to see one of these i'm only i can only ever see the ones from the 1990s these don't exist and and yet now look at where i am looking at all these these amazing things that i never thought in my life i would ever see it it, it really is incredible I'm sorry to interrupt, but who was the dude in the back of um, uh, the Overstreet that always had like his wine out and the wine just like? Oh, I don't know. I know who you're talking about, but I don't know who that is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Copies of Detective One, and he had like the Marvel One, and it's like maybe it was Jeppy. Yeah, it could have been Steve <laughs> Jeppy. Who knows? But I do yeah. remember seeing uh, like, it, like you. Were, those were some of the first I saw too, and I remember thinking. Uh, because many, many, many years ago, I could have bought a Marvel One. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't in the greatest condition. This was forever ago, um, and it would have cost me a lot of money. And I remember thinking, like, the art on this sucks. You know, like the cover sucks. Whoever mm -hmm. drew this uh, uh, Human Torch sucks. You know, and I passed it up. And I think I bought like some you know, Freddy Krueger crap or something. <laughs> 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 Some of the things I passed up, um, we were at a convention way early on when we were kids, and uh, McFarlane was, was early into Spider-Man and selling uh, a bunch of his good, uh, incredible Hulk pages for 200 bucks. 
you know, mm-hmm. and like for us, that was like $10 million, but we could right. have done it. Yeah. Um, the worst thing I ever passed up was uh, back then a Detective 27 with no cover. And yeah. the guy wanted like 300 bucks and we were just like, like, are you out of your mind? You know? Well, back <laughs> then, back then, you know, even a Tech 27 back then when I was a kid, to me, was worthless. It didn't have a cover. And I right. mean worthless to the point of yeah. literally zero value. It didn't matter. Because oh, yeah. in the 90s, when I started dealing, most 99.9% of the books that were coverless were really worthless. Even right. a Tech 27 wouldn't be worth to me. I, I couldn't even tell you if it was worth $300 in the 90s. You know, so it's crazy that you say that, but I would have viewed that as worthless back then. They're absolutely no value whatsoever. Well, you know, we, we talk about that. One of the like, first what? real great collections. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, we, when, we, ahead, when, we, sorry. when we talk about that, no, it's okay. When we talk about that, like, when we talk about, like, Bronze Age stuff, it'd be like in, in Mar era or maybe Aaron. It's like Incredible Hawk 181 that's coverless, right? I mean, most people oh, yeah. nowadays think 180, like, you can see a bunch of 181s and it's like, you know, if it's coverless, is it is it really worthless? And like for the, for the most part, yeah, you know, I'm like I wouldn't buy a coverless one eighty one. Who's gonna? You buy wouldn't, one? but they're worth five five hundred to a thousand dollars now. I know, and I well, there's so many of them. I say it's worthless. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, but what do well, I know? Or just, or just even that missing stamp, you know? Right. I mean, because right? that deters a lot of people away from it completely, and so it's like almost like, well, if it follows like kind of the same kind of pattern, like, will people start paging those out to you? Eventually. Sure, in another 25 to, to 50 years when they, uh, I don't know, if they become scarce. I don't know if these are going to become scarce. You know, paper right. doesn't last forever. Right. We, right. we know that. Yeah. We, but I'm not going to live for 200 more years yeah. to worry about it. So <laughs> I, uh, you know, take care of the books as they are now and as best I can. And, you yeah. know, they, they survive. But God help me, there's more Hulk 181s than I can shake a stick at. <laughs> you know, I you know, so I sold my uh, nine point eight copy right before it really exploded. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. oh. yeah. You hate to hear that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. but I mean that that's the kind of thing that you have to learn as like someone that wheels and deals all the time is like mm-hmm. the the timing of it because like if you hold on to stuff too long sometimes too like it just like I mean I deal mainly in modern stuff so like. It'll like drop like a rock instantly. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, know, so the, yeah, yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah, yeah the, so. the key books like a Hulk 181 will always rise, but nobody could have predicted COVID, and so the difference of rise between Hulk 181 pre-COVID versus COVID was what. 500 percent 700 percent nobody could have you you get that with the movie swings you know up down up down but but x-men one is the same way those have all taken off to the point all of all of the books that were you know that are in gabe's collection two years ago are you know are, are worth you know percentages less than what they are today and and in 2016 when i started with heritage i could have bought out we had a client that had like 15 chamber chill 19s uh we were auctioning them like one a week Mm -hmm. and i started at that time i saw that cover i'm like that's a really cool cover i should buy one but then i was too cheap to spend 400 dollars. and now then then you could see the progression they just kind of went up and up and up and up uh 2016 (laughs) no you you gotta have your teeth wrong because I would have bought every last one of those. And I, I bought, don't know. I bought my copy in 2010. My 9.6. 9.6, but these were a lot lower grade. Sure, they sure, were. but I was buying all of them. Were you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I started in 2016, so they had to be around that time. Was Maybe 2017. Catching, catching moment where we just caught you in a whole trail of lies <laughs> <laughs> or it could just be that i'm freaking senile dude it's one of the two you know when you were in, when you were at my house i kept catching you drinking out of the toilet it was very <laughs> hey you I'm said good. you wouldn't talk about that <laughs> you're gonna make me look on youtube <laughs> right oh that's funny um no i just def- definitely could have missed some uh, brian but um i just did if it probably if they were under uh, 5.0 then yes uh or if they were ungraded yes mm-hmm. yeah that they were because i don't think we graded them 
Yeah. Uh, because the guy had the guy had so many uh, that it was weird. It was just a weird because I know who the consignment, you know, like who the the client or um, CD was. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see if I can find it. Did you? So I guess I guess as a I, I have a degree in economics. Um, as a as an investment kind of thing, how do you how did how did you? I mean, we all don't have an unlimited supply of money, and we know this. But how do you? How do you? Because you said you wouldn't buy low grade bras. Do, do you do that now? Is that like how how is your investment strategy when you were building your collection? Like, were you just buying like big collections and keeping the books you wanted and selling them? Were you just cherry picking books you saw on the internet or and or wherever con or convention you were going to or book, comic book store? I guess back in the day because it's the nineties, right? So, well, I didn't really start getting heavy into it um, until two thousand ten. Okay. Uh, that- that's when I started like really pouring money into it. I had already like had really nice collections, sold them, got back into it, sold them, things mm-hmm. like that. But um, as far as investing, I never looked at it as such. I looked at it as I'm going to buy what I like and okay. buy the shit out of it. Um, okay. As far as far as this goes, this collection, the goal was to have the nicest collection of pre-code crime and horror that I could possibly put together. I wanted to have the, the very best in the world that there was possible. Uh, the only other person that has one near it or I, maybe even surpasses it, I don't know, but his his collection is so broad and beautiful is, uh, well, let's just call uh, let's say his Instagram name, Art Books, mm-hmm. um, just in case he doesn't want his real name said, but yeah. um, Art Books, uh, uh, it has insane stuff. So, uh, but it's, I think it's the same thing. Uh, if you were to ask him, like, I didn't care what I was going to make on them. Um, mm-hmm. it's nice, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. nobody's at making money, but, uh, Brian's heard me say it. My wife's heard me say it a million times and she was there when it was said. Uh, but when I first started going after all the really insanely high grade Harvey's, um, one dealer said, uh, a fool in his money because, um, he didn't know it was me, but I was looking for really high end stuff. And I said, I, I'll pay a good amount for it. And he goes, yeah, I saw this guy on the internet and he's some idiot, uh, you know, like, and he was, he was like some rich idiot. Well, I wasn't rich by any, yeah. by any means at the time. Um, mm. and, uh, yeah, so it was just funny. That was that was how it was. They all thought, you know, these books are garbage. They're a dime a dozen. And I just thought, well, if I buy them all up and get the nicest copies in the world, mm-hmm. you pretty much cornered that market. And when you, it, again, it didn't matter to me if any or not. When you, when you collect, and I, I, I know you have good stuff and we'll get on this in a second. Like, so say you had like a nine, four black cat or something of that nature and you want the, you know, the nicest nine, six, do you just wait it out? Do you buy the nine, six and then sell your nine, four? Do you keep both? Do you, I, I mean, we talk about upgrades all the time on this channel. Like you're upgrading your collection, right? You're buying a, a six O of something. You're going to get to a six and a half, a seven O, whatever, you know, you're climbing the ladder, I guess you would call it. I mean, do, do, how, how do you climb the ladder? Do you just say like, Hey, this is what I kind of want to do, you know, or do you just have a set goal? Like, Hey, if this comes up, it's going to be this amount of money, or is it come? You know, how, how do you upgrade, or how do you, you know, because this is like, like you're, you're, we're talking about books that are so rare. Probably not back in the day. I mean, they were rare, or but they're more rare now. It's like there's only like one nine six in the world, or there's only one of this in the world. You know, what I mean, you're, we're talking that kind of nomenclature is almost on par with like action comics and crazy stuff like that, where you just never see it come up, or you you see it come up. It's like. That, and it's like you never know when it comes up obviously right it just just pops up and either you have it or you don't you know it's like i guess how do you how do you deal with that when it comes to that stuff you know i mean my goal was to find a 10.0 10.1 and yeah. anything yeah so i wanted the nicest one and then it, there was a sickness there for a while where once i would get the proverbial 10.0 i kept the 98 the 96 and it, and mm-hmm. all the ones down and mm-hmm. then I would try and find the original artwork to go with it. I mean, it was wow. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. yeah. One of the uh, one of the few people that I don't think would mind his name, Sean Pete Monster. Uh, yeah. He was the 
the guy that actually cured me of a little of that and took a bunch off my... Uh, <laughs> That's only because he wanted them himself. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to pass the sickness over. Yeah, my wife and I were sitting on the couch on Sunday and um, um, he just kept sending me over money and it was like, all right, fuck it, I guess, I guess I'm selling some of these, but... Um, he, he's got an amazing collection too. And one of the nicest guys in this, uh, uh yeah. collecting. And, and we talk about it too, with Instagram and everything. It's like, I, I've kind of bridged myself into golden age, uh, through this show with DS, obviously, and Brian and all these guys. And it's like the golden age community or the older community. It's like, if you're in and you're a good, honest person, like everyone kind of takes care of their own. Like they look after each other, kind of like a little, like a family or like, you know, a nice group, you know, a lot of people like, and I, and I easy, I, I know how you, you know, modern comic guys, it's just like, Hey, can I grab these books before anybody else? And can I just rip them off eBay? You know, it, it's a little different. Some, sometimes I will say sometimes because that's a blanket generic statement, but you know, the, the golden age guys are just, you know, it's just a, it's just a thing where it's like a camaraderie and it's like a coolness factor and people like to show off. It's like it's like old school when we were kids, right? Hey, I got this. Oh, I got this. And they're swapping and doing all that good good stuff. So yeah, I mean, because we all want to be yeah. part of each other's lives and collections. You know, yeah. it's like Christmas Day, but it's every day. What did you get for Christmas? Oh, I got this, this, and this. How about you? What did you get? And then who are we going over to whose house to play with whose stuff? You know what yeah. I mean? That's kind of really what this is like. Um, and and we all just want to be a part of that. We don't want want to be in my opinion i mean i i'm playing with other people's stuff so i mean that's that's the kind of you know where i'm at but um you know so, to me that's kind of cool so you get yeah. an overview of like everyone's stuff that's kind of cool it's pretty awesome I'm well you know and, and, and the sick part of it is like oh if i go to gabe's house I take mental notes, and I'm like, I go back home and write my little book. Gabe has this, 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 and this, and this, so I know <laughs> who has all this stuff. So I, you know. But it, it's it's cool though. It's cool, and and let's let's kind of break down. And I, I got nice little pictures of all your all your stuff. Um, no, not pretty, all of it. I just well, gave the good stuff. Nah, I, know, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't give all of it if it yeah, was all. Of it. I know. So. Um, so these aren't in any particular order. Uh, I know people in chat are just going to salivate over stuff. Uh, so, oh, I God, I this don't. one hurts. <laughs> this one hurts my soul. Yeah. Uh, so, Average Team Battle Cry number one, uh, great grade, least... seven and a half, face in the middle. I mean, do you, I guess, how do you, how do you want to kind of do this, Gabe? Do you kind of just want to talk about what it means to you, maybe, or like where you, where you got it at? You don't have to mention what you bought it for, obviously, but, you know, just like, you know, where you got it. How, why is it significant to you on all these books, I guess? Uh, I, I don't remember where I got it. I like the cover because a guy's getting burned alive with a flamethrower. Yeah. So nice. brutal. And yeah, it's and, and it's tied for the highest graded at a seven Ooh. freaking five. I and mean, that is yeah. makes me ill. <laughs> and the reason that I like the idea so much is because of the absurdity of it. Like when they show on the Simpsons, you know, uh, itchy and scratchy. And it's yeah. like the mm -hmm. most right. violent thing ever. And they're pushing it towards children. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I just have a dark sense of humor, and I find that very funny. Yeah. So yeah. the idea, like if, if I would have found this as a kid, I would have laughed my ass off. I would have drawn like even worse things. Um, for example, the first time I saw Evil Dead 2, I tried to recreate my own book of the dead at age 11. Like, you know, it just, I don't know, it was funny to me. So um, just the... The look on the dude's face, the fact that they demonize uh, the, uh, uh, the the commie murderer, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just yeah. really cool. Cool. Well, uh, and it's propaganda too. I mean, it was yeah. the, it, it had it was carried over directly from World War II. You know, the, yeah. the propaganda of it. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess we'll we'll lead with this one because it's, it's a big book, but they're not. I I will say they're not in the crazy order. So obviously this is one of the creme de la creme books. Um, nine six chamber chills nineteen. Honestly, between you and me, dude, I can't I can't believe you were getting rid of it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know it hurts you. I know I know it hurts you. <laughs> I, who was that at? Me or somebody else? Well, like, I, I just it, it, it's such it's such an iconic book. This is. You know, whoever ends up winning it yeah you know and the thing too is like 
during the G plus era, we, we came from G plus or some of us came from the G plus community group. And this is one of the books that there was like two or three floating around. And, you know, it was, it wasn't nine sixes. They're like two and a half twos, you know, or like some, some lower, lower to mid grades. Um, but it's, it's like, this is one of the most iconic books of the whole, you know, golden, I guess, golden age pre-core order, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's, it's been, you know, obviously it's the misfits and all, you know, all this, all this good stuff. And it's just, it, it's a beautiful copy. You know, did, when you did, so did you buy this raw? No, you, so here, here's, here's the thing. Were you ever tempted to regrade it? Or do you, do you see why they got a nine, six and not a nine, eight? I was, but I just didn't want to tempt fate. It was, yeah. it was perfect. I actually, st I stopped it from being, um, regraded i didn't think it would hit when i okay. looked at it because okay. gabe had, gabe was on the fence and when i looked at it i was on the fence i had somebody else look at it they were on the fence and at that point yeah the risk is too great okay uh, yeah if i mean if you have like three people looking at it like yeah. on the fence about it like it's probably just like leave it as it is yeah the funny thing to this was is they actually this is a new holder and they actually pressed it for free uh, for for me and Gabe, uh, because the old holder with the inner well had put an in you know the back flap had put an indentation into the book, uh, so I sent that in to have them fix. You know I'm like, hey, you're paying for this. It's your holder that did it, uh, mm -hmm. and they fixed it. It's gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't oh, look good. like anything's wrong with it. It's beautiful. Wow. The actual um, story behind this one is that. Uh, when I started getting back into it, um, uh, my wife and I had just met, um, and I had, uh, had gotten through a, a divorce and we just didn't have anything. So I started to make uh, a little bit of money at one of my uh, businesses and really wanted to get back into this. Um, and I was buying a few things here and there, but, um, uh, the guy that had this, um, I don't know if he wants to be talked about, but he's an awesome, awesome guy. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if you knew what I paid for this, uh, everybody would be crying. But uh, <laughs> today I bought this book and uh, Black Cat 50, uh, 9.0, what is it, a Big Apple copy. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say what I paid for this, but I paid $3,000 for the Black Cat 50. Wow. Uh, combined with this, with, which I paid less, um, I was, it was the most money I'd ever spent on anything that wasn't essential in my entire life. Mm -hmm. So oh, wow. I was driving, I was driving back from picking this up and I called my now wife and I was like sick to my stomach. Like, I can't believe I dropped this money and mm -hmm. I should, I should drive back. I should take it back. I should ask the guy to forgive me and give me my <laughs> money back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And the more the more I grappled with it, the more I was like, no, no, just bite the bullet, enjoy it, take it home. I, and, you know, I, I have the same thing when I buy books too. I grew up as. You know, I I, I have that thing when I, uh, when I, I buy books too with my wife too. You know, it's like my wife. I I got to give it a kudos to your to your wife too, right? Your your wife didn't say, hey, <laughs> Gabe, go back and give that stuff up. You know, it, it's 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 great that she's no, she supportive didn't. of the community too. You know, like. She didn't care at all. I mean, uh, yeah. the only thing she's ever asked me to not buy was a uh, Lamborghini one time. <laughs> I'm, glad <laughs> she, I'm glad she stopped that. But um, no, this one, what was so crazy was, again, I didn't know this existed prior to the Gerber books or the Kirk Hammett photo. Um, I was just a big Misfits and Danzig fan. So it was like, I just thought that was the Die Die cover. Um, so to see that this was an actual comic just blew my mind. Um, I own a, a tattoo shop and it was like one of the first prints we put in the, in the tat shop too. Like it's such an iconic cover to me. This is the one that hurts to get rid of. And I, I debated over and over keeping this one in my black cat 59 six. But then I just thought like, if I keep those, I'm going to be pissed that I didn't keep the rest. So like, you, mm -hmm. you know, this would be like selling all the furniture in your house and not selling the house. So just, yeah. I knew if I sold everything and kept these, I would just start trying to buy the other ones back again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, this one hurts badly. And like, I don't even want to see it. I was, I was yeah. talking to uh, somebody before uh, this, Brian, I think you know who it is. Uh, 
sells comics himself too and he was just sending me the thing that you know messaging me saying that this is going to be his tomorrow and it's like uh, oh yeah he's been i i, I was uh <laughs> I was kind of taunting him. I wasn't taunting him. I was like, tomorrow's the big day, buddy. <laughs> you know, because he, he has told me, this will be mine. I told him I had some inside information that uh, the time <laughs> it is 175 grand. And he was like, oh, oh, God. Yeah. And I, <laughs> That's funny. I haven't even looked to see where it's at right now. I don't, I don't want to see it yet. Okay, uh, I, I won't bring it up either for you. Yeah. You know, what's funny about this book is, you know, the first time I ever saw this was when I started working for Heritage. I never knew about this cover until then. But uh, I knew about the Black Cat 50. I knew about the uh, about the Tomb of Terror, but I never knew about this one. So, Yeah, if, if I would have uh, kept, if I would have decided to keep everything, I would have definitely had bought the original art for it. And I, I forget, it, it didn't go for an insane amount, did it? Not crazy, 175, I think, is right where it ended up. Yeah. And I had assumed I was willing to plink down 400 plus. Well, and let's, and let's talk about that too, because you know, what did Brian, what did ASM 300 go for? 3.6. Yeah. I oh mean, no, I'm sorry, the ASM, the AF15. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 ASM 300 didn't. Oh, ASM I don't know. It was like it was like a, like 750 or 500. Something, it was something like that. It was something crazy, right? And it's like. You know, I mean, this is that's an iconic cover, obviously, too, because it's Venom and all that stuff. But I mean, Golden Age stuff, it's like, where are you going to, you know, I, I don't know. I just, when it comes to OA, I know it's very difficult. You know, we always talk about covers and stuff like that. But, you know, 175, right? It's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not parlaying it. It's not a lot of money, obviously. I'm just saying, in the context of iconic oh, original art covers, that's pity. It's when it comes to AF. 15 OA or Chamber of Chill, you know, it's just like, you know. True, but you, you know, also yeah. have to take into consideration, and this is what people forget, is that the the artist himself, Elias, had never sold anything <laughs> over $20,000, I think it was, or 30000 mm. right around there, prior to, to that sale. So for him to vault five, six times above his highest amount, no matter how iconic it was, is a big mm. deal. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a really, really big deal. Yeah. And Dino, I know yeah. what you're saying there too, like because I, I completely agree when it comes to things that are, you know, 8,000 years old versus something newer. Uh, the only reason that I could see that uh, when it comes to original art is there's only one of each. Correct. Right. Uh, right. And the more, you know, unfortunately for me, uh, from my opinion, uh, the, the ASM 300 is one of the most iconic pieces of comic art ever. Um, I don't like it as much as a Black Cat 50 cover or a Chamber cover or, hell, a, a bevy of other covers. But you could say to somebody like, hey, I, you know, have you ever, you know, comic books? And they'd say no. And you'd show them that like, oh, I've seen that before. Correct. You know, but if you showed them something like this, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, but right. when it comes to the actual comics itself, I couldn't agree more. That even something that's not such a big deal from the 50s, 40s, 30s compared to like again a, a brand new one that they made 60 variants of that just happens to have some traction it, it drives me batshit yeah uh, well, we also have to remember who has the money and who's collecting now and it's unfortunately it's not our generation you know we're right. we're another it's the 80s and 90s stuff that now is becoming a big deal uh and is making this pushing drive and kids got money if they got in on the bitcoin early on uh you know i say kids but Listen, yeah. Dino, you yeah. know, yeah. 30 years old yeah. compared to me, I didn't have that chance. It's, I didn't well, didn't have that foresight. You know, Kids got second, money. It's <laughs> you a, know? Yeah, it's a second tech bubble, right? Let, let's talk about that. Right. Like the dot, it's the dot-com part two, right, in the 90s. You know, 90s built millionaires, billionaires, dot-com bubble. It's, it's basically what it is. And now, you know, back in the day, they were buying whatever they were buying in the 90s. Right. You know, Beanie Babies or whatever you want to call it. Now they're buying comic books and it's, you know, right. just exploding the market, but... You know, it, it's it's crazy right, like that. Yeah. Oh, and then real quick uh, on the Chamber of Chills, like you know, as I transition into like old school comics, like that is my goal. I mean, not not a nine six, but like <laughs> it's my goal to get a copy, like to work my way up the ladder to that. Sure, and and nothing wrong with that. And people would uh, often ask me like, "Well, what's your problem with this, that, or the other?" And it's like absolutely zero problem. I just look at a book like that, uh, like the, uh, oh, what's the, what's the story with the, wasn't uh, 
Wu Tang had that one CD that some some guy bought the uh, he was like a tech guy or whatever and he spent millions of dollars to have the only copy so no the NFT thing yeah. yeah no no it was like oh. Oh, yeah I think it was like a, a one pr- like one pressing uh, for like a one new press. album or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. So there's only and one that which is, which is fine but I love the idea I just think it's so great that you're the only one that has it and that was the reason that I like to go after those knowing that. As far as far as uh, uh, on record, I was mm-hmm. the only one that had. Um, I dug that type of stuff. I, I always like to try and find something that wasn't, you know, there wasn't 80 billion copies like a ASM 300, which is, a, again, a great book. Nothing wrong with it. I had stacks of them. I just wanted to say I got the only one and yeah. corner a market of it. And especially when it comes to books where at the time in the generation there were literal book burnings where they would take these books and fucking burn them because mm-hmm. parents did not want their kids to have them. Um, they were outlawed i like the idea of that and then the fact that somebody pushed this you know put these away and curated them long enough to where they survived Correct. 70 60 50 years is fascinating to me uh, yeah, well, so. what kills me is your is your gangsters can't win. Um, oh shit, whatever number that is, the five I think it is, yeah, uh, the skull cover, and and you mm-hmm. know we got that switched over and that'll be in the, the January sale. But there's seventeen on the census, seventeen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So th- there's more action ones than there are that book. I, uh, you know, our buddy John Z had a copy, he had a low, a low grade copy, and I was bidding on it, and man, it got to like three or four hundred, and I was like, ah, I can't, I can't. It's just too low of a grade, and I was getting out of my price where I was, you know, comfortable paying. And I just, just, uh, I was like, I should have bought. I got a gangster can't win one, but I didn't buy a. I, I should have bought. It's two actually. I don't think it's five. I think it's number two. Okay. But uh, no, and and I agree. Exclusive exclusivity means the same thing with me too. It's like I want to be the only person, right? Like I, you know, it's like. Everybody can buy this and this. My my collection, like my collection's not big. I you know, I can show everybody. It's like you know four racks, and it's like it's not the craziest stuff in the world. It's not the most expensive stuff in the world, but it's like hey, it's cool stuff that I think is cool. And like you know, I I, I try to. That's what my collection goal is. I know if DS was on, his collection goal is the same way. Have cool stuff, and it like you know, yeah, it's like stuff you don't really see often, or things that like I got a you know a, a Capullo like um. A Capullo book from Italy that's very really rare. You're never going to see that book. I've never seen that book ever, you know. But be, be just aware of 10. A case of those uh, Capullo books from Italy. Uh, oh. A little bit. Of- <laughs> well, we know. You know. Hey, hey, I might be your buyer. You never know. Uh, uh, so, th- obviously, this is a great cover. It's, oh, it's an old school label, too, which is which is great, too. A the lot Beth- of those, yeah. Yeah, Bethlehem, right? Uh, so, I if you were 10, 8 0, right? I yeah. Too. That was that was a focus as well. This one actually came from uh, Kirk Hammett's uh, collection that I was able to pry away from him. Um, Beth Lamb copy, of course, but uh, you know, especially being a big Metallica fan and going after his collection and finally getting it. That was another one of those moments where I spent every dollar I had, literally, of our savings, every mm-hmm. last penny. Um, and then like looked at my wife like, holy shit, what have I just done? You know, but it was, it was great. It was well worth it. Um, but this cover literally has absolutely everything. It was one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, I wasn't as big of a fan of Frazetta's paintings, which I know is sacrilege as no, I was. It's amazing. As I was of his attempt at comic book art. Uh, his run on uh, the, um, uh, and I wish I wouldn't have sold these either, the the Flash Gordon books that he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Famous Funnies. Uh, yeah. yeah, Famous Funnies, uh, especially the one where those aliens are coming down the steps and Flash is there with the gun. And like his his use of heavy blacks, his shadows, his perfect shadows. Uh, again, why I like Golden so much is because if you look at a Golden cover, you can tell how influenced he was by a guy like Frazetta's comic art and being able to just blot down pure black, which if you're an artist, you know that you have one shot. 
Now, yeah. nowadays, where you're doing everything, what, on a Wacom tablet or however you're doing it, yeah, you can fix that shit. But back then, it was, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you might have just been killing off 20 some odd hours of work. So um, the scarcity of this book um, and the fact of who I got it from just made this such an amazing copy. And I, Brian sent me all these back. This is <laughs> so, I guess, can, can I, can I preview a little bit on the whole Kirk thing? Was it like, I, I mean, it's, it's great and it's probably all shocking, right? It, to meet Kirk and like, you know, he's obviously a big celebrity and all this good stuff, a, a la almost like Nicholas Cage and stuff like that. Was it, what, was he, was it hard for him to pry the books away? I guess was he at that point where he was just like ready to get out, or was it like you know one of those things where it was like, hey man, like you know, because a lot of people have like when it comes to their collections, right? There's guys who have spectacular Spider-Man whole runs that think are worth like thirty thousand dollars, even though they're worth like hundreds of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Just like you know, some people just just put mad prices because they never want to give their stuff away, or they just have personal attachment to it. Was was that kind of his thing, or? Well, he had a, a crippling, crippling heroin addiction uh, the time that, mm -hmm. at the time that I uh, got these. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just well, no, I mean, no. he, he, oh, he was I, never in uh, Never. No. Uh, let, let's strike that from the record. I'm teasing. No, that's okay. Uh, no, I, I, and I've heard um, from shop owners, and in, in, I'm from Houston, uh, that I've bought different comics from other musicians like um like uh Lars Fredrickson of Rancid like he's a mm -hmm. big evil Ernie fan and so mm -hmm. um one of the shop owners out here was in communication with him because uh they Lars was looking for uh I think like Yu-Gi-Oh cards for for their children for his children and then right. like they ended up trading like you know Yu-Gi-Oh cards for his evil Ernie books in his collection and you know mm -hmm. it's just kind of it's just kind of interesting to see like oh he just has them in the back issue and it's kind of like oh, yeah. what well, it's I like i kind of want to own like some of Lars books i'm pretty sure he follows the black cat page too which i'm, I'm always kind of shocked at some of the people that follow like their guitars from tool follows and it's like you know i've been a fan for a thousand years and mm -hmm. i never saw him like hit the follow button so then one day when he um, makes a comment. It's like, hey, look at that. That's that's pretty neat. But no, the uh, the Kirk thing was. It took a long time. Um, and again, I can't stress enough. I have I have a really dark sense of humor. Kirk was never addicted to heroin. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think uh, he he was deep into his collection. He had a badass collection. It still does. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think he really wanted to focus a lot on the uh, old movie posters. Which the rarity of some of those put these books at shame. Oh, it's, it's um, stuff like Frankenstein, right? The original Frankenstein right. or the original Dracula. That that makes this look common, you know. Right. It's, and so I, you know, you, you, you I got, I was lucky enough and privileged enough and blessed enough to actually go into his uh, old house that he doesn't have anymore um or you know just moved um and you're looking at these things on the wall and you're surrounded by millions of dollars in just um, insanely awesome posters uh and then when i you know without giving up too much of his private information you know he took us for a tour of the rest of the stuff and then it's badass toy collection and masks and blah 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 so like by the end of it it I'm looking at it like there's no way he could be attached to these comics. Well, he was because for years, you know, he curated those two and bought these and selected that. And there's even um, I saw something from a while back where he would put ads in, I think, the rock mags or comic mags that, hey, I'm on the road. And if you've got cool comics, I'll buy them from you. And it was like you know, nobody did that when he was doing it, um, you know, a, pretty much the biggest uh, metal band of all time, but even in the 80s when they were, they were still very popular. I mean, you would think that somebody like that just wouldn't have the time for that, but guys like him and Danzig were actually doing just that. And I loved it. I loved the idea that these guys were older than me, especially at that age. And I felt like, you know, at 15, 16, like hey, I'm, I'm too old to be doing this shit now. You know, I'm in high school and everybody else is doing this or that, which I was doing that too, but I would, still doing this quietly 
it just gave people like me hope at that time, like, hey, these guys are badass, and they're doing it, and they don't give a shit what anybody thinks, so I'm just going to keep doing it. But, um, but it, it took a long time to pry those out of his hands. It took many, many... I, I, I'm friends with the... Ended up being friends with the guy that was his assistant. And so that took years of asking and debating. And uh, Kirk did a, uh, I think his second Fear Festival thing. And prior to it, uh, there was like a private event where we went to the Winchester house and did the murder mystery thing. And, um, you know, Slipknot's Corey Taylor was there and Slash and everybody. It was, it was just really cool and a nice small thing. We had dinner afterwards. But... Um, I had uh, chatted with uh, Kirk for just a, a short period that night, and I had told him uh, he has that Misfits drum head, the painted Misfits drum head horror business, uh, and I told him, hey, I'm coming for that too, and I think he said something to me like, pack a heavy lunch, like, you know, I ain't get rid of it, uh, but I bought that too. Wow. Cool. That's just cool which, stuff. Which was me. Ah, yeah. that one. That's, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously, Black Cat 9-6, uh, Right, highest is it? Is it the only highest rate? One is it one on the census? I believe there's the nine eight. Uh, okay, and Art Books has the nine eight, and he probably got ulcers from how many times I tried to buy it from him, and you know he wouldn't get rid of it. And I was, I, I think Brian talked. You know, probably we looked at this one too to see if it would uh, hit a nine eight, but I think we were both pretty satisfied of what it was. Yeah, the uh, lower left corner for sure kicks it yeah, out. I, yeah, I can which, see it. Which blows my mind because I I had some modern books that would have three, four spine ticks Correct. and this and that. And they'd give it a 9.8 and then they'd fucking hammer a black cover. Yeah. For one tiny little thing, you know. But whatever. Yeah, trust me. I, I'm well aware as to yeah. how much screaming I do. <laughs> yeah. So this one, uh, this one I've, I've, I've gone, uh, I've had several 9.0 copies, 9.2s, 9.4s, and then this one actually came up on eBay. Of all places, I was shocked that they had it on eBay. And I, it was a Friday at like 3 o'clock it was ending, which blew my mind yeah. too. Yeah. And wow. I was more than happy to shell out whatever it took. If it went up to 100 grand, I was going to spend 100 fucking grand. And I think that's what I even put in there because it was like, I don't care what you put in, I'm winning this book. Um, and I was at my shop, um, I own a gun store and at that time I was working it by myself. So, you know, if anybody came in, it was like, uh, I just shut the front door and say, I'm waiting for this to count down and <laughs> nobody touched it. it. It went up a little bit and it ended at like 13, five and I almost shit. Yeah. Um, wow. I just thought, like, I thought it was, I thought there was no way that could happen. And then I was mm -hmm. positive that the guy was never going to sell it for that yeah. and five days later i had it in my disgusting grimy hands and there it was yeah. you know i was that, that, about as shocked as the guy that's uh, eating the uh radium on the cover right you know and, and the thing too is like like you said ebay right that's that's a gamble i uh my buddy george he got a he got a black hat 50 in australia of all things right didn't think the guy would ship it you know two or three weeks later it just shows up at your door and it's like it's glorious and it's like in like you know, does he does he ship it decently? You know, it's all you know. I mean, and like you said, thirteen five is a, not a not a number to scoff at either. Like, does he throw it in like a bubble mailer with no protection and it's like bouncing around and shit? You know, uh, I mean, he was a, yeah. he was a professional. He he yeah, owned a, uh, I'm sorry, he owned a uh, comic book store and did it and did it right. Good. Uh, you know, it's wondering. it's what, what were you gonna say? Oh, one of the ones I was gonna tell you about. Uh, they had asked about raw books if I bought raw, and, and I had in the past. Um, again, my wife now and I, we were going somewhere for lunch and, um, uh, what is, uh, the, the chamber, uh, is it chamber 20, the, um, zombie cover, the romance zombie cover kissing the 22. Yeah. It's the kissing, uh, yeah. cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were about to go inside, uh, somewhere for lunch and I still have like a Sony Ericsson, you know, you can't get on the internet type phone. Mm -hmm. And she had an uh, iPhone, and I was still trying to figure out the intricacies. But a guy had three copies of that ending on eBay, and I sniped them all up for 200 bucks a pop. Oh, man. Uh, oh, wow. And 
I actually I like see. that more than I like the 19. Well, I sent them all in to be graded, and those are the uh, all three 9.0 copies that are on the Wow. Center. Wow. The worst part about it was back then I, I had no clue. I just thought that when you guys wrote file copy that that was like a big deal. So I kept the file copy and got rid of the ones that had better page quality. There was one of them that was like a white pager or something, like an idiot. I got rid of it. I didn't know. Uh, you know, you know, it's funny. I, I we just came back from Baltimore a couple of weeks there, a month ago or whatever. You know, and people, people, somebody asked me, came up to the booth and asked me about page quality. I'm like, I only collect white pages, and like, you know, it's, it's objective to me. I, I know people get really bent up on on page quality, but for me, it, you know, off white, white, white. I mean, I know Brian. Brian's gonna shoot me for saying that, but it's like me? Uh, for me, no. Yeah, it's like for me, like page quality. It's like. It, Dude, when you when you see and it's not a behest on on Nelson and CGC, but like when you see it like that like that one like cream to off white or white and you can see it's like that's definitely cream, but it has off white white. You know, it's like you know, it's like uh, you know, it's like. Uh, no, you're I, never I, gonna hear me. You're never gonna hear me freaking out about page quality unless it's breaking and falling apart. Yeah. And and the reason I say that is because the books shouldn't exist as it is listen the black hat 50 and 96 shouldn't exist like this Correct. and so for it to have a little bit lesser of a page quality what it takes for it to stay white is is humidity uh and and some sort of temperature uh to where it's a lot around a little bit of humidity let's say the the mile high collection was stored in uh, in uh, colorado it was stored in the basement it bleached the the uh, pages white uh and it stayed really nice but it needs to the have white. that extreme right it, it needs to have that extreme otherwise uh, you know and addicts tend to t to tan them because they they dry out a little more so it's just a matter of where it is now if it's in a basement i'm scared to death it's going to have water damage to it mm -hmm. so it, it's not a common thing white is not normal unless it's an 80s book or or, or newer you know and then to me whenever i bought uh, comics in the 80s the, all the pages were tanned Exactly. They used, yeah. they used that crap paper back then. They used the yeah. crap paper, right? Yeah. But most, when, but all the Joe books I have are white pages, even though, in fact, I know those are shitty. You know, I don't know what the um, they're newspapers. So it's right. just newspaper prints, and it's made not white. You know, right. but the, if you look at the Mile High books, if you have any of them raw, they are bone white. They they really oh, yeah. lo look like uh, unlike anything you've ever seen because they they've bleached over the years of being where they were. Mm -hmm. So and I do like the idea of a book that's encased inside of something and uh we're worried about the color of the pages that we can't see uh, again, <laughs> right I'm saying, exactly I'm joke what i'm saying uh because there is still a product inside of this uh right. it's funny to me uh, to quibble about it but uh i don't want to look at this cover anymore i'm very okay, <laughs> okay. no you're okay uh, can i can i ask again uh, about uh, just just the market in general so like obviously this auction is going to go off you know and even the one uh, later on but it's like do, do you what are you going to do i guess do you just do you sit on your your i'm going to say winnings as a as a as a thing um do you do you get into a different collectible market do you go i, I mean i don't know do you go NF, nfts a new rage do you do nfts do you do you just stow it away and live a happy life and run into this upset no, I'm gonna double dip in trying to get him to invest in other stuff with our with our uh, you know uh, uh, auction house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what exactly is an NFT? I'm sorry, I'm ignorant to that. Oh, oh, God, oh. you don't even want to know. They're it's, more uh, they, just just think Bitcoin without the currency backing. To uh, it. Yeah, there you go. So you could own a, so you could own like a digital copy of of this cover for and be the only person who had. You know, I know, I know. It's it's a thing now. So, no, uh, for me, uh, I needed to put a war chest together to help pay for uh, a new kidney. So it's going to. <laughs> That's not funny, funny Brian. <laughs> yes, it is because I know you. <laughs> uh, right. Um, no, um, we we live in Northern California, um, and it's pretty much on fire twenty four seven. I got yes. so tired waiting for all these to burn. Um, so in the vault that Brian, my old vault that Brian was one of the only people to see, 
Um, you know, it was this massive collection of vintage and uh, crazy guns um, and comics. And it was essentially my nest egg. Um, and a lot of money was spent on this. And, and they were all my favorite things. And I couldn't stand the idea of them burning. Uh, in 2017, my, it almost burned. And like my mom's house burned. Like everybody we know, the house fucking burned. So mm. I couldn't stand the idea of that happening. Um, we, and you had talked to me numerous times that year. Uh, you had reached out a bunch of times about how many times yeah. you had to pack up. And, you know, it was one of those things of you had to be ready. It just had to be at your at your leisure. I lost my uh, vintage uh, Misfits 7-inch uh, collection in one of those uh, rushed exits. Yeah. And then Brian found them uh, when, when he opened up, uh, you know, all the boxes uh, at Heritage, which was great. Because, you know, that was like 30 grand in records that I just thought were gone forever. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, we, uh, we, we had a plan to move back where my family lives in Illinois. Uh, after my dog died in a state of crazy grief, I bought a house back there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we don't know if we wanted to do that. So then we bought a, a different house out of the fire zone that's, you know, California is not cheap, and mm -hmm. I don't like to owe money. I hate paying a mortgage, so I like to just pay shit off and call yeah. it a day. So okay. I figured uh, this would be one way to do it. No, I, I appreciate that. You know, and, and being a per oh, I'm sorry. B being, a, being a purveyor of history is a big thing, too, with me. Like, you, you know, you could have just said, screw it. I'm going to keep it all, and if it burns, it burns. But I think you understand the historical value of the things, too, right? I mean, it's like, you know, like, nine sixes and nine eights like you're 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 a comic book collector right so you understand i mean like it'd be a shame uh, not just the financial hit but i think the the history of the books too like i mean that's that's something you're not the, the, no, but the I, I would have definitely been uh, a lot uh, more upset at about a million plus uh, loss yeah. that was never coming back because i never got them insured <laughs> uh, oh boy uh, uh, uh never did. The, the, you know this book here, Mister. Mister. I've been screwed over by insurance companies so many times that I was like, "Screw this! I'm not doing it." And I, I got a, I got a good lawyer for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was yeah, it knew me. I never wanted to admit to them, especially in this industry, that I refused to uh, insure these books, which you know would keep me up at night as well. I know it's insane. It's absolutely ludicrous to have mm -hmm. a collection like that and not insure it, but. Uh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I guess it paid off. I got to save uh, that much money yeah. each year. Uh, so, so this Mister Mystery Eleven, right? It's 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 a great cover. It's, it's another iconic cover when it comes to the pre-code horror. Like ants buried up to them. Fire, I guess fire ants theoretically. And uh, you know, it's it's a great cover. What do you, what do you got on this one? Iconic. See, my man's got the sign and everything too. I like it. I think this is one of the most brutal covers that doesn't get enough attention. Um, oh, it's getting I, attention. People love yeah, this book. So, so Vince and uh, Metro had this uh, on Comic Connect, and for some reason, I forget, I think we were on vacation or something, I just forgot. And it sold, and I was just livid. Um, and I kept the, uh, the book that they sent out, um, you know, showing all the books that were coming up for auction, and it just haunted me. Uh, so I reached out to him one day and I was like, you know, just, um, and shout out to Vince for doing this. I, I sure appreciate it. Um, I asked him if he could find the, uh, person that bought it and just give them an, ins you know, ask him what they wanted. Uh, I know it sold somewhere in the three to 4,000 range. Uh, and I knew somebody was going to make me pay for it. And I think I paid like at least double or triple, uh, maybe like 10 grand. Mm -hmm. um, which was insane. And I knew when Vince came back, he probably thought like, no, this, or I, I guarantee the seller probably thought, yeah, he's never going to say yes to it. And I did. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had it about a week later. And uh, I, I, this was one of the books that I felt like I paid way too much on. And I did at the time, but I, I knew that the, the world would come around to it eventually because it's just so horrifying. I do kind of like how happy that skull is in the background. Though. Right. Like that guy but didn't it, it, had a bad wife and he just went 
You know, what's really funny about this book is how rare the Mr. Mystery title is. Like, yeah. just oh, yeah. trying to put that run together. Oh. Yeah. yeah, a lot of these I got from uh, Kirk, Kirk um, but this was not one of them, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, bring, we'll bring this one up. Yeah. Let's not bring this one up. Now, see, now this one I won't look at. You know. Oh, so boy. what's this one though, was? This was the first time I ever. This was a. Uh, it was well, this might have been Comic Con Connect as well. This is the first time that I really was like, screw it, I've got to have it, even though I didn't have the bank to back it up at the time. Um, I was just going to have to make whatever happened happen. So I started going after all the Nick Cage books, too, because I loved his collection. I thought it was neat. And this was one of them, and it was, it was pretty much dead off at, like, 2000, and I was going to win it, call it a day. And we were actually in the kitchen with my wife and our little guys and just about to eat dinner, and I was like, okay, I got this one. It's in the bag. And then somebody else hits it. I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. so I got to come back again. And 2,000 went up to like 12,000 or whatever it was. And I was just livid. I wanted to find out whoever it was and beat them to death because I knew <laughs> I was going to win it. And, it. you know, And I know that's silly to say because I'm sure they thought they were going to win it too. But I'm just thinking, like, why are you making me waste so much money? Because I'm going to win this book. Uh, and this one and the monkey brains one were that same night. And I... My wife didn't say anything, but I remember just kind of looking at her and her looking at me like, for real, this is what you're doing with money? Like, well, it gives me a clockwork orange kind of vibe to it. For oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I like how how distorted his face would have to be on the ball that big. Um, I've, I've actually drawn it out um, just to like kind of screw with it, and it's, it's pretty funny. Nice. His eyes would literally have to be like this big, huge. But... <laughs> <laughs> so it gets the point across. We we got this one, Dark Dark Mysteries Night. One of my favorites. Yeah, bondage cover, classic bondage cover, obviously. Skeletons. Yeah. Just the skeletons. Yeah. Great cover. Uh, uh, this one came from a collection. Uh, if I recall, the guy lives lives in Europe. Uh, and uh, randomly, I woke up one day and it said, like, are you interested in a top flight run of horror comics? And when I opened it up, it was like, wow. Like, they were all, all the best graded books. Um, and he wanted a shit ton of money at the time. I mean, now it, it would be laughable what it is. But at the time, it was a lot of money. And more importantly, it was a lot of money for me back then. Because, again... I, I do very well now, but then it was like, you know, should I get this or should I buy a car? And I would just buy these instead and yep. still drive the same old car. Um, you know, I'd wear the same clothes every day, nothing flashy, just this is the this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I, so I had this. Like a cover I, like uh, the last yes. one doesn't yeah. do a lot for me. I know it's iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, uh, Brian, I love the Dark Mysteries covers because I love that it was always a skull motif. Um, and I like the artwork, but I like the ones more where it was like, you know, they're guys in the car and they're driving the drunk driver. Oh, that's, I used to own one of the Dark, the, one of those. They All the Dark Mysteries have skeletons in them, which is cool. Um, I like but evil covers. In, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. It freaks out bondage. And that's great. It's a great cover. It just didn't do as much for me as, you know, scooping monkey brains out or right. setting fire, you know, push, pushing a face on the stove. Well, that's a, yeah. oh, that's incredibly iconic, too. The reason I like this is because I call it what I call the pinwheel covers, even mm -hmm. though I mean more like water wheel. You've got the Terrific mm -hmm. Five. You've got this. You've got oh, the yeah. Mr. Mystery. Um, and well, so yeah, I, that's yeah. the reason I like it so you much. Fight, fight Comics with the, uh, with the, the water the wheel. Fight Comics the, with the water wheel, wheel yeah. So, yeah, I've been looking at one of those. I mean, the guy wants like 1300 I'm like, I'm the only one who thinks this is kind of cool. And I'm like, if You're I not. To, I know, but if I had to flip it, would I get more? You know, I was like, do I always get more out of it? Would I take a hit because it'd be a tough book to kind of move? I, I don't know. The problem is you're not the only one. It's part of that four-book run that, you know, is that. And the other thing is, you know, 
I've had to get away with this because I'm I'm working with heritage now, and I've mm-hmm. I've learned I've I've had to get away from the money thing, uh, yeah. which is why I really don't buy comic books as much. I'm more buying animation cells because I've actually fallen in love with them, and I'm spending what I want and collecting what I love again, as opposed to worrying about the money. Yeah. And Gabe had it right the whole time. You should be worried about what you love, not right. worried about the money. Yeah. And and that's why his collection is so iconic, because mm-hmm. he did collect what he loved and he collect the best of what he loved you know and and i wish exactly i wish that i had done that more in my life i think it's one of the reasons i look up to his instagram so much and when i saw his instagram initially i collectively shit myself (laughs) i mean i I really did it was the stuff i loved but it was all unbelievable it was just unbelievable uh and and so that's that's just did. Uh, I yeah, that. I don't have a sign for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I get asked a lot, what should I collect? What should I get into? And that was always my answer, Brian, was just do whatever yeah. you like. Um, yeah. Unless it's moronic. But yeah. that's, so, that's also, uh, that's very subjective. So That's the problem. You can't, yeah. Beanie babies. I started, yeah, I can't, bleh, you know, but what do you say? So, so Aaron, Aaron. When I started, when I put that G.I. Joe run together, it was the same thing. A lot of those issues are very hard to get in the 9.8. Very uh, hard, yeah. Uh, because they had such a low production run. Um, and hell, I even got some of them in a 9.9 or a 10. But um, it was another thing when I put that all together. At the time, if you did that, you were essentially, it was like you were building a vintage car from scratch. You, you're going to lose money. Um, but the world came around. And then it's like now I'm starting to see like G.I. Joe number ones go for thousands of dollars. Right. Did well, but not the way it's doing now. Um, I mean, that that run now that I put in, I will definitely make quadruple what I put in on it, if not more. But when I did it, I was losing money every time I I paid a lot of money for uh, like the one of a kind copy. Every right. time I knew I was losing money, but I had to curate the, the, the nicest one. And somebody still has me beat. Uh, there's a guy on the CGC boards, uh, I think uh, Snake Eyes or whatever. He's, he's one of the nicest dudes, and he's got the single best G.I. Joe collection, hands down. Um, whatever book, I think the Elite one you were asking about earlier, yeah. he, he'd probably have kind of a badass yeah. collection, by yeah. the way. This this book I, I'll I'll bring this down because I got look at, I, I guess I'm kind of cool because hell yeah I was gonna say that's that a tough book yeah that book looks, look familiar because then you just picked that up in Baltimore yeah, yeah so uh, you know Stray right you know Stray Flexing yeah. yeah yeah so I got this from Stray so that is yeah, one you... of my favorites yeah the, the the girl is awesome the way they drew it the, the yeah gangster, awesome looking yeah. Yeah, so, no, that's cool. I appreciate Stray for helping me out on that. We, and you uh, look at that going, who wouldn't be afraid in that situation? You know what I mean? That's kind of why I like it so much. Yeah. Uh, obviously, your copy's way better than my yeah, copy. My right. copy's probably like a like a two, maybe two and a half on a good day. So, but. The one, Brian, that I kind of wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of, I, I don't know why, uh, out of everything I've got, is the, uh, the iron cover where the dude's just uh, – Ironing all the people. Oh yeah, that's a great book. The I know what you're talking yeah, about. The clue so book. The it's a clue. Um, clue comics. Yeah. yeah. And do you know, I, or if you guys haven't seen that one, that one's one of the most over the top vicious books. Uh, right next to the Lou Morales cover, where he's cutting the tongues out and uh, got the woman uh, in the bedroom. Yeah, that's the other Lawbreakers. That's Lawbreakers Eleven. Yeah. Is it is Lou it Clue Morales. Comics? Clue is Comics, it, I don't remember what it is. I would just do Clue Comics, Iron Iron Torture Cover. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it Bless is. You. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Uh, the April one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we'll just do this. We'll do a little bit of this action. Here's a good question from the audience real quick. Are there any recent covers y'all can think of within the last 10 years that homage a classic horror cover? I mean, Chamber uh, of Chills. Just recently, Night Chamber of Chills 19, 19 with the with the Betty, uh, Betty and Veronica just uh, did it. Hive comics, Hive yeah. Hive comics, the, the ice cream man. Punch twelve, uh, yeah. Punch twelve, a great Black cover. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this is this is good, good stuff, stuff, man. This is this is a real cool cover. I I don't even see. I'm, I'm still young in the golden age. Pre this is I would I always pass Clue Comics kind of. It's just like it's like yeah, everybody you know, does. This like, is literally the only book in the whole run that actually was worth any money. Okay. One of the only and ones. I think I'm yeah. Did I find the nicest one of that, Brian? Do you recall? It's a nine, and I it's a nine zero from what I remember. And I think it's either the highest or the second highest. It's real high up there. Cool. And then wow. yeah, if you guys. Uh, Lawbreakers suspense. Uh, I think number fourteen. Um, the uh, cut out tongue cover. That one's pretty great. We, I hate we just had the. Yeah, we we just had that on the market report because one just came up on eBay and it was uh, probably like a, like a two three maybe two or three and it was like th like I was looking at it, it was like twelve hundred and all of a sudden it just got astronomical. I think it ended up like thirty. Thirty-three hundred, maybe, on eBay. Oh. I can, I can show it. I know. Right I, now. I, for a while, I had the ISIS copy, and then a, one, like maybe a half tick uh, higher, popped up. Uh, but that's such a great. Uh, again, I, I hate Lou Morales's art, but he conveyed it very well. The uh, frenzy and the insanity in the guy's face. Yeah. I, I saw a question flash up. If uh, uh, Gabe has a. Uh, uh, Instagram page, yes, uh, Black Hat Collections. Yeah, it was it was this Black Hat Collection. It it uh yeah. I, can, I can show the original one. It was um yeah, it was a two, three and a half. It went for twenty two seventy five. I mean that's not that's not terrible. Obviously, it's obviously it's it's a, it's a cool the cover. Obviously, yeah. the guy's face is amazing, and I mean just yeah. just thinking like this this was marketed to children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I always thought it, uh, that this would have been a better way for uh, the movie Castaway to end with Tom Hanks. Like, if he <laughs> actually, that does look like Tom Hanks in Castaway. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> Remember, he found out it just needs a Wilson in there. there. Yeah, and then, you know, so he got rid of that pesky uh, dentist husband and the kids, and he's going to start fresh. <laughs> that's funny. You know, they, uh, least, actually, I think the candle is in Wilson there. Uh, that's uh, you mm -hmm. know. There could be an updated version with like a FedEx box in there. That's hysterical. Oh boy! Don't give the store variant guys any more ideas. It's just, <laughs> there's, this, there's this one up right now. It's uh by now. I don't know who has it up, but yeah, this one's up. It's not. It's not hey, the greatest, but if they're willing to put out my ideas, that's kind of cool to me. <laughs> okay. Because okay. like at least it exists then, and it's like kind of like all right. Uh, Tomb of Terror, obviously. Uh, nine six. Um, number fifteen. I don't know if I had fifteen. I don't think I had a fifteen. I think I had a. I think I had maybe it was fourteen. I don't think I had a fifteen. I, I consider did, this a, the third, the third best uh, uh, horror cover. You've got the Chamber Chills nineteen and the Black Cat fifty, but I think this is right behind them in in uh, order of of how cool they are and you know the black you know the black cover and how nice you can keep it. These don't come around in nine six I, every day. It's insane. I think crime, this one crime I the crime doesn't pay is a twenty seven. Even though it's a crime book with her like and the kitchen for sure, the for sure. It's, it's, not a, it's not a couple. Pre, Absolutely, you know, but that's that's one of them too. And Brian, this one wasn't my favorite just because the guy's a, actually a robot, and I thought that was kind of lame. Um, yeah, until you pointed out the gears, I never saw them. I never noticed it, but it's still cool to me. I don't. I don't know. I, it is. Just, it's it's very cool. And uh, at one point, I think I had. I, this was ridiculous. I had a nine, nine two, nine four, and a nine six all together, and that made for a really cool uh, picture. But um, it was just insanity. Like you know, it's just too much. Like just just own the nice one and call it a day. I can see or where Matt Cronin other... got the influence from Futurama now. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, speaking of that book, I did have that. Uh, I had the Futurama on the nicest copy. Um, what book was that, Brian? Um, was that uh, Wonder Comics forty nine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had oh, that. Nice. I had a nine six of that. Mm -hmm. I think the promise fact, eclipsed it. I, I think I could be wrong, but the promise came out, and I think it beat it. Maybe I had, uh, maybe uh, it went at one I less. That in a hotel room with cash. Like seventy something thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> it was wow. nuts. Uh huh. That, that could have gone very wrong. Yeah, this is, this I, I don't cool. want to know how you got seventy thousand in cash. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, 
You let me worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this this is yeah. cool. I, this is I'm a date stamp. This is this is me. I, I'm a big date stamp guy. So seeing a date stamp of 53 there, that just that just ticks the, all the boxes for me. You know, I had a Plastic Man, a uh, Plastic Man one from Quality that had an old date stamp that I sold way too cheaply for two and a half, but it had a date stamp on it. It was cool. You know, I've I've had a lot of people um, try to pry this one away. I'll be very surprised if this one doesn't go nuts. Um, the fact that it's a 9.4 on a tough black cover, uh, the fact that it's, I mean, uh, I haven't seen hardly any of these even in decent condition, but really the fact that it's a white pager, Spokane, like, that it's just nuts. And it's such a great cover. It's, I've never seen one outside of like a 3.0, uh, aside from yours. It's insane. I actually, uh, I had like a a 3.0 copy that I gave to my buddy Jeremy Wagner. Yeah, um, that's that's the one I saw. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then he sold it like a jerk. Yeah, mm. I got that too. Uh, there's I a there's a from that. And I'm going to tell him he owes. That's funny. There's a uh, I don't I don't know another reputable online place. There's a there's a restore three and a half going off in another another area. Um, I won't give away too many details, but. Uh, it has color touch on it though, so it's a purple label. But it's how much is it going for? Uh, it's a, it's an auction, so I don't know yet. It's still going. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually it starts uh, January third, I guess, but that's okay. Uh, great cover, man. Cool book. I mean, that's one of those bucket list books to have. I mean, it just it it checks all the boxes. It's just. The devil coming out of the mouth. It's it's just sick, man. I, that might be one on the on the list to uh, to procure on my on my wall back here. I got to figure out how I'm gonna do all my wall stuff. But uh, that's that's pretty just cool. Reminds me of like an old like expressionist type painting. I I don't know. Maybe it's just because the devil himself looks like Dolly or whatever. But uh, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, and then I, I got these last two, and then we'll get you out of here. Um, I guess do you want to do the graded or the OA first? Brian. I think you should put kind of it. Can you side by side them? Um, that's kind of tough. I didn't. Okay, didn't then do just that. do the uh, do the book. Yeah. yeah. So, who is next? Five. Cool, cool cover. Obviously, the newspaper. Kind of red dress. You know, I mean, that's a big, that's a big collecting. I know Laura from uh, Bird City out there. She likes red dress covers, obviously. Uh, but you know, the newspaper and the the guy's face and the question mark and being a mostly black cover. It's just, it just checks all the boxes and and this is uh you know very important in the history of comics because this i think actually got from what i kind of remembered i only heard this uh just recently um so maybe i'm misremembering it but i think somebody had told me that this is what got them rated uh by the by uh the authorities mm -hmm. so they this uh book actually caused a raid uh and uh the people at standard had gotten in trouble uh, mm -hmm. for it uh so i wonder what in, the original original artwork is for this i don't uh, know you uh, know maybe we'll we'll have to guess do you have the next picture well it's that <laughs> so yeah. what's really cool about this is having both at the same time uh not only having one of the highest graded books but having the original art and the story and i read i actually took the time to read this yesterday uh it was the first chance i got to break away and actually read through the the whole thing uh online you know on our pictures it's mm -hmm. phenomenal it's got the classic you know the classic thing of the bad guy is always the bad guy but he gets his curmuppins in the end but he does some bad stuff you know mm -hmm. he really he really does how vicious is it, you know, with him, like, her only crime is just being alive and being pretty. And right. She would, you know, like, the whole thing is made up in his head. She would never dance with somebody like me. So, I, you know, I'm essentially kind of kill her. I mean, it's horrible. It's horrifying. Uh, don't get me wrong. That's what makes it so insane to me was that right. they were marketed to children. Like, it's, right. it's <laughs> that's the funny part. And again, uh, my sense of humor is way darker than most and i don't think it's right i just think it's funny that who what kind of sick maniac would think hey this should be in a comic book and we should put it in the same rack 
the children buy shit, you know. It's, but see, yeah, and I, I flip around on the other side of this, Gabe. I, I look at that and go, but the bad guy got his. The moral of the story is you're always going to get caught. You're always going to get yours. You're always going to get, you know, busted. Don't do these things. Sure, and, and that's and, why they are having to put in the corner, like, crime always loses. However, they were selling, instead of the cover being like Elliot Ness getting his man. That's true. That's very fun. true. Yeah. Because that's what sold the books, you right. know. So they knew what they were doing. That's true. Thinking, uh, who put out uh, uh, the crime does not pay? It was uh, Lev Gleason. I always pictured Lev Gleason as like the most scummiest of dudes. You know? <laughs> uh, like you know, sell children an all black uh, uh, garbage bag for Halloween. Like, oh, you're a black ghost. You know, get out into the street. <laughs> You can't be seen, you know, just scumbaggy dude like that. Maybe he was cool. a nice guy, who knows? You know, you know, I, I, I do, I, I, we don't have that much. We don't have anything more to show, but I do want to say from the bottom of my heart, I know me and Gabe have been trying to do this for years, you know, on Instagram. And I know you're a very busy guy, so I appreciate you coming on and uh, repping the show for me and, and doing that great stuff. And obviously with Brian and, and Heritage, always obviously Heritage, you know, they, they come to us and I always appreciate it. I, I hope you guys both. Yeah, I hope, I hope Heritage does well. Obviously, with all the with all the views they're getting, and you know, obviously, Gabe, you know, hopefully they go for sky high prices, and it's insane and all that good stuff. And I, I appreciate you guys both uh, coming on and, and doing your thing, man. I, it, it's been a, a great history lesson for everybody else, you know. And I, you know, I know old school comics from a viewpoint. You know, it's always a modern. Everybody wants to know what's a hot book this week, but you know, these these videos i think in you know five five years out in line that's when the people are going to go back and like oh i should have done x y and z i know ds ds is usually around hanging out with us and it's like these, these people are going to be like i, I always is a time capsule right it's going to be like these books should i should have went after these books instead of what's going on in the hot this week you know so i i appreciate you guys really coming on i don't have too much to say anybody got anything else they want to kind of wrap up on you know what when does this all end tomorrow night, boys? Yeah, yeah so the stuff you saw today uh, it, it wraps up tomorrow, the original art on Friday. Uh, but uh, I'll be on the podium for it all. So uh, oh, that'll be the, the fun part is, you know, you'll either see me turning green and uh, wanting to puke or uh, I'll be jumping up and down on the podium. I, I'm, I get really excited. I'm happy. Cool. So uh, I love doing it. And, and I can't thank Gabe enough for for uh you know the trust he's placed in me uh, you know it's a uh, it's a big deal because i i view this as one of the most historic collections i really do well yeah and you know someone that <coughs> someone that's learning about all this now like this was a great history lesson for me uh i majored in art history and it's just like it's great to hear all the different stories and then like just learning like what are some steps i can take to make my transition into this the uh, the only thing that uh, Brian that I saw that just like absolutely sent me into a blind rage was that for real the panic number one artwork is now coming up. Really? All right. Well, yeah, we've got it this at this uh, auction, don't we? Yeah. That's pretty much my favorite cover of all time. That's and really you don't want to buy it more than anything, but I'm not going to because I do <laughs> like go back at it again well um, yeah, me, that was the most iconic and i still think it's highly underrated but that was the book that got the ec comics uh off at this rating and uh i don't know if you know that but the only i did not know that yeah it was only their secretary went to jail she was the only one there um but yeah that was the book out of all the books they did the parody book with just a little boy you know with a crazy look on his face and a bear trap and sam's foot that's what got them rated. Not the head chopped off, uh, you know, Crime Suspense 22. Um, not the bevy of other horrifying. That's covers. amazing. Yeah. So that one, what, what's, uh, if you guys happen to know, what's that one going for right now, the artwork? Uh, hold on a second. I can pull it up. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to remind all the audience, too, right after this, uh, we're having a crossover episode with Cover Picks. So I will be hopping over there for that, and you know we'll do a draft style comic pick. Uh, it's so at uh, fifteen five, Gabe. Ah, well, maybe I might fifteen five. So, well, yeah. well, 
Yeah. Uh, just make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll get you. We'll make sure you guys get out of here. Uh, obviously, uh, check out Tales from the Flipside YouTube channel, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. See you, boys. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.